With me now is Nick Flannery, a TikTok star taking the world by storm. Nick, it's a pleasure to meet you. How are you today? Thank you. I'm very well. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I do appreciate it. So first things first, I have to tell you something that I'm sure you hear a lot. Your hair is absolutely magnificent. Uh, you know, your hair, the length of it is exactly what I'm kind of uh, going for. Do you think that I can pull it off with this beard? I think you could absolutely pull it off. Yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, just keep up with a good diet. Make sure that you're uh, not washing it too much, which is a weird thing to say. It makes it more brittle, but um, anyone can pull it off. Well, you know what? I'm really happy to hear that because over uh, COVID, these times, you know, it's just I'm not really impressing anybody because I'm not seeing anyone in person much. I was trying to grow my hair out, but I learned about myself that my hair actually grows up. So I kind of look like a character from The Simpsons or when it gets too long, I start to get a mushroom head. So if I could pull off your hair, I feel like I'd be the next Fabio, you know? That's what kind of happened to me. It grows outwards and then the weight of it eventually brings it down. So <laughs> you, you kind of have to push past an awkward point. There was plenty of awkward points before it got to this length. I got, you know what? I think I'm going to go on this journey and I'm going to keep you posted as we go, okay? I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Who is Nick Flannery? You know, I think I'm just someone that's very relaxed. I'd like to think of myself as a good friend and quite a positive person. Even if I kind of, you know... We, in England, we all have a bit of a cynical kind of British sense of humor. But even though I carry that internally, outwardly, I'm trying to spread kind of peace, love, just wanting anyone to have a good time. And anything that I'm posting is either to kind of relax people or make them in like a chill zone if it's a cooking video or if it's something comedic, just to even put a smile on someone's face. And it's nice to hear positive feedback from people. Undoubtedly, I think you're a really bright light. Uh, in these dark times, it, as I was telling you before the interview, it makes perfect sense. While you have so many followers, so many fans, you're doing some great work, and I hope you keep it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. So I feel like you are still very, very new to TikTok. Your success has kind of been rapid. You're at over a million followers. Your videos have gone crazy. How does that feel? Has this all kind of sunk in yet? It's definitely not sunk in. I mean, the last probably four to five days I've kind of been like waking up and kind of expecting it but each day when it was first going viral I was like okay this is the one that's going to flop and it's kind of a really negative place to be in but now I'm starting to move into this kind of acceptance spot but completely still in shock like it doesn't quite feel real I mean I've literally been on TikTok for like two months and then in the last like I said 10 to 14 days it's just completely took off and I just can't believe the outpouring of kindness of love as well. I mean, it's very easy to look at social media and think it's a negative place. It's a toxic place. But generally, it's all been brilliant, which is, is a refreshing kind of surprise to me. Yeah. You know, you know, you've made it when Snooki comments on your Instagram post. <laughs> Are you aware that she not only liked your post, but she said, I love you? She said, I love you. I commented back. I was like, I kind of, obviously it's very difficult for me to manage my notifications and trying to respond to as many people as possible. And I saw this and I was like, I did a double take. I was like, wait, what? And I was like, this can't be her. It's going to be a different account. And I checked it out and then she was following me. So I followed back. I mean, we all love Snooki. We love everyone, but we love Snooki. And it's, it's unreal. Yeah. That is, I saw that. I nearly fainted for you. I'm like, I can't even imagine if Snooki commented on my Instagram post. I, I would have done a backflip, I think. Did you do a backflip? I, I called my best friend immediately and I was like, go to my latest post. Because I, I pinned her comment specifically for that reason. And she was like, what? And I was just like, so we had a little moment where we were like running around screaming on the phone to each other. Um, so not quite a backflip, but some acrobatics maybe. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Now, if you could collaborate with any celebrity, whether it's be on TikTok or beyond, who would you want to collaborate with and why? Goodness, I mean, there's two kind of aspects to what I would like to do on TikTok. I mean, I am quite into lifestyle kind of things as well. So I've been doing with cooking things. It would be great to do some sort of video with Nigella Lawson, who is a UK chef, but international as well now. Um, that would be kind of that route. But with regard to kind of a good collaboration on TikTok, I don't know, maybe because in the UK, I'm quite close to Eden Harves. So I think that she has a really cool thing going on. I'd really like to do some work with her. I think it'd be fun to even just hang out or do a live together or something. I really hope that happens. And if you ever want uh, to, to do a, a cooking segment, myself, I can uh, kind of consider myself to be an amateur uh, cook. I cook pasta. Uh, that's yeah. about the uh, extent in which I can cook. But I feel like you and I could do this really well. 
Absolutely. I think cooking is just a journey. You never stop learning. There's always new trendy ingredient, ingredients to try. And it's just a brilliant thing to have. And I think it's okay as well. I think we're moving into a place in society where you, instead of being so modest, you can tell people what your talents are. You know, I may not be the best comedian. I may not be the best at skincare, hair and makeup or whatever, but I can cook. You know, it's, it's good to, for people to kind of share their talents and, and push them out and say that I'm actually good at this. And um, just in a kind of positive way, because you, you, if you give that out, it's likely that people will come back to you and say, hey, I tried this. It was brilliant as well. Absolutely. Now, what are some of your other talents? Oh, goodness. I mean, I've recently started um, a vegetable garden. So gardening is not necessarily a talent, but it's a skill that I'm trying to refine. Um, I would say that pretty good. I mean, I consider myself quite funny. I would imagine that like in person, I mean, usually my humor is a little bit more relaxed if it's around a group table of things and can kind of get comfortable. But I talented. Definitely cooking's up there. I think it's, it's probably one of the main things that I can, with confidence, say this will turn out well. Talking about humor uh, and comedy, your rich white lady videos have absolutely blown up. I was watching them this morning and I'm seeing one million likes on them. It is absolutely crazy. Now, is that idea, that concept that you had, is that something that you've kind of just uh, accrued just from like watching in, like watching in reality and that just kind of came about? How, how did that idea spark? I think, I mean, the actual root of the idea was I was scrolling through TikTok and someone happened to had used, used the um, Big Little Lies theme music. And I was like, always these shows, they've always got someone with a beach house. And at the front of this house that I'm in, there's like bars that look a little bit nautical. So I was like, okay, let me get my camera, let me get a glass of wine and I'll just feel it out and do a video there. And that kind of went to 400,000 views and I was like, Okay, let's see. At that point, that's a massive amount of number. It still is for me. It's, it's, a, it's a huge number of people watching the video. So I was like, okay, let's try another one. Let's see if that works again. And from there, it's just taken off and we're up to like part 25 now. Um, but the kind of inspiration, I think that the area that I live in is quite, um, it's sort of in the countryside. There's kind of, they call it like a golden triangle where I am. There's a kind of a spa town nearby which has kind of affluent people. So I see these people driving their Range Rovers and going back and forth and doing all these things. And I think to poke at the kind of unoppressed, which would be kind of Caucasian people in that respect, I think it's kind of something that hadn't been done and that's why it kind of took off. And all of the series that I've watched growing up, you know, Desperate Housewives, but the undoing, big little lies. We've got movies like First Wives Club. They all have these kind of niche cliches, Sex in the City, where you can kind of pull different things from. And I think that's where the kind of inspiration comes from a little bit. Have any rich white ladies come after you yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple have been like, why do you need to write white in there? Or like, why? I've been asked why I'm racist towards white people. Um, my response is usually just, I don't believe in that. I respect your opinion, but that's not, I don't think that, that's for me and just my opinion is i don't think that you can be racist towards white people because white people haven't been oppressed because of the color of their skin fair enough we have you know irish scottish there are kind of divisions within that or religion that have been oppressed but it's not because of the color of their skin it's xenophobia or it's kind of anti-religious stuff not to get a little bit too deep there but that's usually my response but i i respect that everyone has an opinion and i understand that that's how it's interpreted and you know you can't please everyone one hundred percent. You I couldn't have said it better myself. Now, obviously, th this onset of success has been rather rapid, as you said. It's been very, very uh, recent. But have any cool opportunities kind of opened up for you since your your fame on TikTok? I think so. I mean, I have a couple of um, influencers on TikTok that want to do collaborations with me, which would be great because you can share audiences and bring audiences towards your page and vice versa. Um, with regard to brand deals, I've not signed anything yet because I'm making sure that it's the right deal. I wouldn't want to just put something out there just for the sake of putting it out there. Um, I wouldn't want to really water down the feed at the moment. I'm in a position where I can pick out which um, is going to be the best thing. But it's so true. As soon as anyone gets any kind of notable thing going on in their life, they start getting loads of free things. So I'm about to get a PO box, I think, because I just get keep getting sent packages, which is very kind and nice, but some of them are very not relevant to me. So I'm like, who can I give this to? I'm like re-gifting certain things. I appreciate all of that, but that's kind of 
with regard to paid partnerships, I think that's where I'm going to go. I'm also signing up with an app, um, a website, should I say, called PearPop, where you can basically interact with people through comments or duets or um, using people wanting you to use their sounds in your video. So it's all new. I'm learning things. I still don't fully understand the TikTok app, even on lives. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to answer questions and kind of be kind to people that are taking the time to look at me, you know, who am I to not answer these questions or DMs and things. Very exciting. Now, when your place gets too full, you can just go ahead and send some things here to St. Louis, the United States. I would gladly accept them for you, okay? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Tell me those goals for the, uh, for the remainder of 2021. What does that look like for you? I think the goal is to develop a kind of a strong base with regard to followers. I don't want to sell out or, or kind of... Um, again, push things into so much of a monetized direction that it gets a little bit watered down and we lose that kind of authentic side of things. Obviously things are still new. Um, but I would just like to hopefully have a couple of successful series. I think that's kind of where my channel will be heading. If I, and then in between that, I'll just add a little bit about, hey, this is actually who I am and what I like as well. Um, so I'm trying to just change my feed a little bit and just add some with this series some with maybe we'll try out some other series and impersonations and things like that and then also some lifestyle things so just kind of a steady growth but um respecting followers and, and friends and to make sure that they're not taken for granted mm -hmm. i am super excited for what's to come before we go i know you've been having some technical issues with your primary tiktok account what's been going on give us an update on that i mean I have um, a temporary ban for a week. I believe that th there was a comedy video done on a horror movie, and it may have been that in the beginning of the film, that, sort of, uh, that video, there was a kitchen knife. I believe that that is where it's gone. I should have used a banana or a piece of asparagus or something. Again, I'm so new to TikTok that I'm not 100% sure. I can still go on lives. I'm posting on my backup account, which is at Nick underscore Flannery, and I also am posting on Instagram. But I'm... I'm talking to TikTok to try and figure out what the problem is and um, nothing is ever done with any intention to violate any community guidelines of course but hopefully this week will allow me to get some really fun content together that's done very well so that when I'm back next Tuesday I can um, keep posting as normal. Perfect again I'm super excited I'm gonna leave the floor to you if there's anybody you'd like to thank how can people find you on TikTok Instagram all that good stuff. Well, I've been posting the series on my YouTube channel, which I'm sure if you just search Nicholas Flannery on YouTube, you can find that. Uh, Twitter is at Nick underscore Flannery. TikTok, again, at Nick underscore, uh, Nicholas underscore Flannery. And then the same for Instagram. But um, I think I would just like to thank all of the out love of, out, outpour of love and kindness that I've received, really from lots of people. I try to answer as many DMs as possible. There are people that talk about their depression and, and major life moments that have been lows for them and where my videos have managed to get them through that. And I really appreciate them taking the time to say those things and I'm trying to respond back as well. So thank you to everyone that supported, genuinely, hugely appreciate it. 